All right, hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna be talking about what are junk bonds or high yield bonds. Uh, now this is, this is Jay here in the daily terms and a junk bond, well, is something that is not an investment grade bond. Uh, so what that looks like is you have bonds, right? And that's, that's your ability to raise capital without giving up equity. The trade-off is, is that bonds have the first claim on assets of whatever it is that's underneath. So let's say with a company, if they were to liquidate, equity is second and the debt is always first. So what that looks like with junk bonds is they are the lower tier, the, the second team of the basketball, if you will. Uh, but what that looks like, you have a rating system. So with S&P and Moody's, that, that's your typical rating system on Wall Street. You have your triple A's, double A's, singles, triple B's, double B's, single B's, all the way down to C's and D's. Triple A's are the assets that are have the least likelihood of defaulting. Whereas when you get down into a double B or below a double B, that is what a junk bond is. Typically with those investment grades that you have 3% and less with the yields, whereas with the junk bonds, it's three to 6% on average. And what that does is it entices investors to allocate the capital to take on more risk to help these companies. Now, usually companies that raise junk bonds are, are doing it because they have lack of a track record or they're just wanting to entice investors. Uh, this idea was popularized back in the 1980s and junk bonds were really popular for doing leveraged buyouts and hostile takeovers. Now that's less of the case today and it's kind of frowned upon to do hostile takeovers. And so junk bonds really, it, the way I like to think about it is it's just like a personal credit score, right? So you have 700, 750, that's a really great credit score for, for someone who's wanting to get a loan on a house or to go apply for a credit card. Banks love it when they can see that you're predictable, you have a track record, and it's a lot easier to to borrow someone else's money when you have a really good credit score and you can show people that you're responsible. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, if you get down into like a 580 or a 520, that's really not a great credit score, not at all. And it's extremely hard to get a loan from a bank or to get a credit card. You're probably talking to some guy named Dino who gives you money in a brown paper sack and there will be consequences if you don't pay him back sort of thing. With the junk bonds, they are the lower part. They have a higher yield. And for risk tolerant investors or traders, you will see them you know, trade you know, within that area. It was really interesting. I actually had a finance professor who was a bond trader on Wall Street, and he gave us a lecture regarding you know, the investment grades and the, and the high yields or the junk bonds. I didn't really know much about that. It's because usually people focus on, on equity markets or on derivatives. You know, there's less people that talk about the debt market and, and, and actually how large it is. So a lot of the world of finance actually runs on debt. Anyways, it's a really interesting way to look at things. Uh, if you enjoyed the definition, uh, please give me a like and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys on the next video.